Welcome everyone and thanks for joining us today to learn about salmonella illness in backyard chickens and ducks. We're here in a real live backyard coop and talking with CDC veterinarian Megan Nichols. Megan leads a team of disease detectives who investigate outbreaks linked to animals. And I'm Brittany Bame, your moderator. We'll be here for 20 minutes to talk about your questions. So to get started, why are we even here today talking about this topic? Well, Brittany, we're actually here for a pretty serious reason. And that is we've had over 200 illnesses that have happened this year that have been linked to contact with live poultry. And about one out of every four of those illnesses has occurred among children. So unfortunately, we are seeing people who keep backyard chickens getting sick. Now, the good news is it's actually a preventable issue. So through some really, really simple prevention measures, we can actually keep our families and our flocks healthy. Oh, wow. So how do people even get sick to begin with? Are, are the chickens sick first and then pass it to us? Well, I think that's a really great question, and we get that a lot at CDC. So one of the things that it's important to understand is that chickens can carry salmonella and still appear healthy and clean. It doesn't necessarily make chickens sick. However, this salmonella germ can actually make people very sick. And that's one of the reasons we're here in a backyard coop today mm -hmm. is because the salmonella can be anywhere where the chickens le live and roam. And that's why anytime we're in this environment, we want to make sure that we're washing hands and doing things to keep ourselves safe. For example, I actually have a bottle of hand sanitizer that I keep nearby the coop so that when I don't have an opportunity to run in and wash my hands right away, I can still use it to keep my hands clean. Got it. Are there any other practical tips uh, to keeping your family safe? Absolutely. Well, one of the other things that I have here today are actually my gloves. So you can see that these are gloves that I use when I'm cleaning the coop and doing other activities. I keep them right here near my rake. And on top of that, I don't know if you can see this in the camera, but I also <laughs> wear boots that are very easy to clean. And they're boots that I do not wear inside. I only wear them when cleaning the chicken coop, so I don't track any germs into the house. Gotcha. Well, what about tips for cleaning the coop or equipment outside? Well, when you are in this area, you've got to keep in mind that there's the potential for there to be salmonella germs. Mm -hmm. So chickens live outside. It's not something that we want to bring into our house. In fact, we have a great coop here and it keeps the chickens very safe from predators and also very warm. And so we make sure that any tools, feed, water dishes or other things like that, we clean those outside and we don't bring them inside. Got it. So what would you say to young uh, parents of young children who might be thinking about getting a backyard coop or mm -hmm. chicken? Well, again, one of the things we have seen this year is that young children are some of the ones that are most affected in this outbreak, a little over 25%. So we recognize that it's really important for parents to be aware of this because children under the age of five years are ones that can get really severe salmonella infection and that can even require hospitalization in some cases. So it's really important for all parents to supervise their children when they're around chickens or any other animals and to make sure that they're washing their hands really, really well with soap and water and drying them with a paper towel afterwards. It's a great thing for us to be able to share this experience with our children. We just have to make sure we do it in a way that's safe. Right. Those are really good tips. So for those who are just joining, we're talking with CDC veterinarian Megan Nichols about salmonella as it relates to backyard chickens and ducks. So we're going to start taking your questions. And while we wait for some questions to pop up, um, you mentioned that there's outbreaks going on, illnesses, people getting sick. Is that? Can you tell us more about that? Are people still getting sick? Is it ongoing? Yeah, this is an ongoing outbreak. We continue to see people who get sick. And one of the things we want people to know is that it's always important when you're going to bring any animal into your household that you make sure that it's the right animal for you. So we don't necessarily recommend chicken ownership if you have a weakened immune system or if you're an older adult or if you have really young kids in your household just because those are the people who are at, who are at greater risk for really severe salmonella illness. Also, we want people to remember that chickens can actually be a seven to 10 year commitment and they can require a lot of things like a coop, like cleaning equipment and food. So it's really important to take that into consideration before you bring chickens home and into your backyard coop. Wow, who knew it was such a commitment? That's crazy. Um, so we have a question from Roger. Do you recommend people in suburban areas keep chickens and why or why not? Mm -hmm. Hey Roger, it's really great that you're asking this question. 
One of the things that we think is actually a good first step is to make sure that your county or local authority actually allows you to keep backyard chickens because there are some local or county ordinances that don't necessarily allow it. Now if they do, I think it can be a really great and positive experience for you and your family to learn a little bit more about backyard agriculture and even maybe to have some fresh eggs. <laughs> great. And Willie asks, um, is there anything we can do to give the chickens uh, to kill the salmonella if we know they have it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one thing that we have seen in some cases is some people give their chickens antibiotics. And since the salmonella doesn't necessarily cause the chicken to get sick, it's not something that we recommend. However, we know that it's important to keep your chicken coop clean and dry. And it's a really good idea to make sure you store the chicken's food in a closed container mm -hmm. so that the mice don't get after it. And those are some things that can really help to keep the germs down in your chicken coop. However, you don't necessarily need to treat the birds because they don't get sick. Right. So we have a great question here from Sarah about um, the hand washing and what about using hand sanitizer if you're not able to use soap and water right away? Mm -hmm. Sarah, that's a really good point. And I keep hand sanitizer near the coop so that I can use it um, before I have the opportunity to wash my hands. However, as the first thing I do um, when I'm ready to go inside is I remove any clothes, especially my shoes, that I was going in to, wa to work in the coop. Mm -hmm. And then I go inside and I wash my hands first thing with soap and water and dry them with a paper towel. This is actually a great activity that you can do with your kids yeah. and sing the happy birthday song twice. Kids love that. Oh, that's awesome. And Kelly asks, how frequently should we clean out the whole coop? Mm -hmm. Well, Kelly, I think it probably depends on how many birds you have and how quickly it gets dirty. One of the things you want to make sure you're doing is preventing any excessive buildup of chicken manure and to make sure that they have a fresh layer of bedding. One good rule of thumb is if you can start to smell things in your chicken coop, it's probably a little past due time to clean it up. Got it. So what about people who have chickens for egg collection? Are there um, advice for collecting eggs? Absolutely. And the, the way I remember this is actually what I'll, I call the five C's. So the first one is to collect the eggs often. You don't want to leave these eggs in your coop where they're getting dirty. The next one is when you go to bring them inside, make sure you're cleaning the eggs. And this does not mean washing. It means just wiping off the outside of the egg to remove any dirt and debris. The next part is to cool your eggs, to bring them in and make sure that you refrigerate them. You don't want them sitting on the counter. Next, cook your eggs thoroughly. No runny eggs here because we do know that salmonella can even get in the inside of the egg. And lastly, if the egg is cracked at all, make sure you throw it away. That's not something you want to eat. Great tips. So Avril is asking, um, her school is considering getting some backyard chickens to be sustainable. I've heard something about um, salmonella. Should we be concerned? What do you have to say about schools who might have chickens? Um, yeah. I think, Avril, it's really great that you guys are considering having a backyard poultry experience. One of the things I will say is that we don't recommend that in the event that there are children under the age of five that go to the school. Mm -hmm. So this is not recommended for preschools or daycares, just because those kids are more likely to put their hands into their mouth, and we know that's how they can get salmonella. However, if there are older kids that can wash their hands, especially supervised, and can learn a little bit more about caring for animals, I think that's a great idea. You just have to be careful and take those prevention steps. All right, so Sarah's asking, are some of these prevention steps applicable to uh, pigs, cows, other barn animals? Absolutely. Sarah, you are spot on with this. Any time that you are around farm animals, including chickens, goats, pigs, cattle, or even others, they can actually carry some germs that don't make them sick, but that can make us sick. So if you're at a petting zoo this summer or this fall and enjoying time with the family, you want to make sure that after you're around those animals, you're washing your hands very, very well with soap and water. Great. And so Deborah's asking, what about Campylobacter? Uh, is that another type of illness you can get from these types of animals? Yes. Campylobacter is another type of germ that chickens and other poultry can carry. And so by taking a lot of the measures to actually prevent getting sick with salmonella, the hand washing, mm -hmm. the wearing dedicated shoes, and making sure you're not tracking any germs inside, and cooking any chicken or eggs thoroughly, those will also help prevent a lot of the other germs that we can get sick from. Great. 
Uh, Joshua is asking for any advice for people who might be starting their own backyard flock. Mm -hmm. What's the first step? I think the first step, Josh, is when you go and consider getting a backyard, uh, setting up a backyard coop, you want to make sure that you have information first. So go to your local library, talk with any friends. The U.S. Department of Agriculture actually has a great website about this. Maybe get a couple books and learn a little bit more about what it takes to keep backyard chickens. I know I was surprised and Josh, you might be too. All right, a few more questions here. Um, Laura's asking if there's any advice for like county fairs and animal handling that a lot of people are going to this summer or fall. Yeah, with county fairs and other animal venues, we don't necessarily recommend chickens in those environments. Mm -hmm. You can see that here in the backyard coop, our chickens are actually very comfortable hanging out in the shade. They don't necessarily want to be held or touched. And we want to make sure that any venue that has animals has hand washing nearby right. and post some signs that tell parents, make sure you wash your hands after you're in this area. And as you can see from us, no food or water in the animal areas. Got it. Okay. So Christina's asking, when cleaning the coop, uh, should you wear a mask or any other protective gear? Mm -hmm. I think that's something that is up to you. If you have another reason to wear a mask and have talked with your doctor about that, then that may be appropriate, or if you're worried about dust and debris. However, ordinarily, if you're cleaning the coop out on a regular basis, you may not necessarily need to wear a mask to do this. However, it's always something that is a good idea to talk with your health care provider or others about if it's needed. Great. Mm -hmm. And just a reminder for those joining, we're talking to CDC veterinarian Megan Nichols about salmonella illness as it relates to backyard chickens and ducks. We have a question from Okali about um, the risks of eating raw egg. What are some other things we could get sick from when we eat egg that might not be cooked all the way through? Well, salmonella is definitely a big one in terms of eating any raw eggs. And we have seen some outbreaks in the past that have been linked to consuming eggs that are undercooked mm -hmm. or not fully cooked. And so we want to make sure any time that we consume eggs, we are cooking those eggs thoroughly. So we don't want to eat those runny eggs. Got it. Um, Lindsay is asking about other animals like pets, uh, dogs that are coming out being with the chickens. Could the dogs then carry those germs back inside? Mm -hmm. Anything to do about that? Yeah, that's another reason I'm really glad we're out here in the backyard because you can also see that I actually keep my other pets separate from my chickens. I think that reduces the stress a little bit. It's good biosecurity, which is something that means that we're doing our best to keep the germs away from our chickens and away from our other pets. Mm -hmm. So I don't let my dog in around to commingle with the chickens. I just think it's probably better that he doesn't get in here and track any of those germs around. Got it. Um, what about if, if you have a child who maybe gets sick from salmonella and you think they got it from the birds, is there anything you should do with the chickens if you think they have salmonella? Yeah, I think it's really important for us to think about all chickens as potentially having the ability to carry salmonella. Mm -hmm. So if we think about it that way, we want to make sure that we're always taking prevention measures. Now, if your child gets sick from salmonella, always talk to your doctor. And it's not necessarily a reason to need to rehome or get rid of your chickens. Right. It's just a reminder of how important it is to wash hands and take those other simple steps. Got it. What yeah. about um, chicken manure? Is that good in a garden to help your crops grow? Any advice on manure? Yeah. Well, there are some really great resources out there from a couple of universities mm -hmm. around composting of chicken manure. And that allows you to make sure that all the germs that are in the manure die but you still get the nutrients in your garden. And then it's always a good idea to remember, any vegetables or fruits that you're gonna eat, you wash them first right. because you don't want manure on your vegetables. No, I don't. Very good. How about, um, from Erin, how about mixing flocks like ducks and chickens in the coop? Is that okay to kind of commingle poultry? Yeah. Erin, great question. I don't know if you have chickens and ducks, but I find that it can actually be a really cool experience to have both. So one of the things I would say is you certainly can bring them both in. However, it's a good idea if you're going to bring new animals home to isolate them for a little bit. That way, if the birds that you're bringing home have any other diseases, they're not necessarily sharing it with your existing flock. And there's more information about that on the USDA um, website. That's the United States Department of Agriculture. Gotcha. Great. Great. 
Um, what about when we're thinking about going to buy, you might have touched on this already, but when you're buying chickens, um, are some places better to get them than others? Mm -hmm. That's a really common question that we get, is where should I get chickens? And sometimes people um, will even ask their feed stores, and I think that's a great first step. So you want to make sure that when you go to the store to buy chicks, you actually ask, where do they come from? And you want to make sure they come from a hatchery that takes extra steps mm -hmm. to try and reduce the burden of salmonella that's in the environment. And they can do that through things like testing the environment, really making sure things are clean, and sometimes even using a vaccine for salmonella. So you want to make sure that the hatchery is taking those steps too. Got it. What about organically raised chicken? Is that any different than just normal chicken that's not organically raised? Yeah, I think when it comes to chickens in your backyard, there isn't necessarily a difference that we see. So it's something that you can consider, but it's not necessarily something we consider when we're looking at salmonella and backyard chickens. Gotcha. I think we almost are out of time. Might have time for one more question. Um, I think we kind of hit on this, but anything that we can do with our chickens in terms of uh, vaccinating them or, or, or reducing the risk that they would have salmonella so we can yeah. be sure that they're safe. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the first thing is to make sure you're always taking precautions as though your chickens could have salmonella mm -hmm. because, again, chickens can carry other germs that could also make us sick. The next thing is to make sure that you're getting your chickens from a hatchery that takes these steps to reduce the burden of salmonella. And that's something that you can always ask when you go to the feed store to buy the chicks. Do they source these baby chicks and other poultry from a hatchery that does their best to reduce the burden of salmonella? That's a really important question and it can help. And then of course, when you bring them home, make sure everything is kept clean on a regular basis. Great. Um, so. As we wrap up today, can you just give us like a summary of what people should know to protect themselves and their families from salmonella? Absolutely. So I think that raising poultry can be a really fun and educational experience. And the reason we're here today is because sometimes things can go wrong and people might not be aware mm -hmm. that chickens and other poultry can actually carry germs that can make us sick. So what we want to do in the event that we participate in raising backyard poultry is wash our hands, don't wear your coop shoes inside your house. Don't kiss, cuddle, or snuggle your chickens because they can have these germs on their feathers. And to make sure that you're talking to your kids and others about appropriate hand washing and supervising them anytime they're around the animals. Wow, well, I've learned so much today. Thank you so much, Megan, and thank you anytime. all for joining us today. If we didn't get to your questions, we'll comment as soon as we can after this event. Have a good one. Bye.